Summarizing against the motion, Jerry Saltz, columnist and art critic for New York Magazine. Art first, everything else follows. There has been an art market since the Renaissance. Right now, we just finished a time of the biggest art market on the face of the earth. And now that art market is contracting. And in the coming years, a lot is going to change. Things will herniate out, other dealers, critics, collectors, etc., that we can't yet see. I would say that art is a way of knowing the world and a way of knowing yourself. Art will ha art, the art market became content for the art world. It's content for a lot of you right now. That I want you to vote for our side, for us. But also for you, if I can say something that egotistical, because if you're only seeing art for its value and saying that it's, of course it's going to be unethical, the people that buy and sell it, that almost goes without saying. But is it really more unethical than what's going on out there? Real pain, real serious stuff, world-changing economic stuff. If you think that, then you really, I just want to say, when you go to an art gallery or a museum, that could be in your way, that you think that all of this is unethical, that unethical. Yeah, it's unethical, but <laughs> no, no more than you are. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry Salt. Finally, summarizing for the motion that the art market is less ethical than the stock market, Adam Lindemann, an entrepreneur and a major collector of contemporary art. Um, thank you, John. Uh, the, the, um, Jerry, I, I just want to say to all of you over there, I do feel for you, and I, I'm with you, but, of course, I'm with my teammates here, and... Uh, <laughs> I appreciate the, the, the difficult time you've had tonight. Um, <laughs> and I, I love Feeling everything that you said, you know, but the rea a minute 30, okay. Art, the art is based on two things, as far as I can tell. And Jerry said, we're all learning on the job. And, and I, you know what, I couldn't agree more. I, uh, I'm learning right now. But uh, the two C's are consensus and confidence. And these are the things that the art market is built on. So what makes a great artist? It's sort of this platonic concept. Is there such a thing as great art? Perhaps, but in whose mind? The thing that makes art valuable is consensus. What makes Picasso Picasso? Because everyone thinks he's great. Someone thinks he's crap, and that doesn't really matter because people are still paying a lot of money for it. So consensus is what makes the art market, and then we need that extra thing that often the auction house brings, a dealer can bring, which is confidence. And those are the two things that, that make us feel com comfortable with art being valuable. The reality is, though, that the ethical side is up to the individual that you're dealing with. There's no way to guarantee that anything is worth anything. And so when we're speaking in terms of Dave Hickey's intrinsic and extrinsic value, the intrinsic value of art is perhaps infinite, but the extrinsic value is really something that is almost impossible to measure on any given day. Thank you, Adam Lindemann. And thank you to our panelists who have now concluded their portion of the evening. So here's what's going to happen next over the next three or four minutes. We're going to have you vote again. Um, I'm going to take a minute or two to talk to you about our upcoming debates, and then we'll have the results. So to remind you, our topic is the art market is less ethical than the stock market. Coming in off the street, 32% of you supported this motion. 30% were against. 38% were undecided. We decide the winner by the side that moved most people to change most minds and change their numbers most significantly. If you are for the motion now, press number one. If you are against the motion, press number two. If you remain undecided, press number three. Our next debate is Tuesday, the 17th of March. The motion will be 
blame Washington more than Wall Street for the financial crisis. Panelists for the motion are Neil Ferguson, professor of history at Harvard University and senior researcher fellow of Jesus College, Oxford University. John Steele Gordon, an author and commentator specializing in business and financial history. And Nouriel Roubini, a professor of economics and international business at the NYU Stern School of Business. Panelists against the motion are Alex Berenson of the New York Times, Jim Chanos, the founder and managing partner of the short-selling investment firm Kainikos Associates, and Neil Minow, editor and co-founder of the Corporate Library, an independent corporate governance research firm. This debate, I want to remind you, as well as all of our spring season, will take place here at the Rockefeller University's Caspary Auditorium. And all of our debates, including this one, can be heard now on more than 170 NPR stations across the country. You can check your local NPR member station listings for the dates and the times of the broadcasts. And finally, copies of books by Richard Feigen and Adam Lindemann, as well as past debates on DVD, are on sale in the lobby. We've had a very significant movement in the results. Reminding you, before the debate, 32% were for, 30% against, and 38% undecided. As you can see, 55% are for, 33% against, 12% undecided. The side for the motion carries the debate. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us.